I'm Andy Weinberg from Miller Welders, and this is part one of a series on learning how to TIG weld aluminum. A couple of the biggest challenges I see for beginners is getting your hands to work independently. With TIG welding, one hand has to hold and maneuver the TIG torch, while the other hand adds the filler metal. All of this has to happen while your foot manages the power output of the machine based on what you see the weld puddle doing. The other challenge is knowing or seeing when the aluminum is ready to weld. You have to wait for that weld puddle to appear before you can start welding. Aluminum is silver and shiny, and the weld puddle is silver and a little shinier, so it's much harder to see when it's ready to weld. Steel is easier to see when that transition to the weld puddle takes place. The first thing I want to do is work on technique. Here are some dry exercises to help train your hands to work independently. First, sit down, get comfortable. Put on all your safety gear, including your welding helmet. Basically, get yourself in the same situation as if you were really going to start welding. Grab the TIG torch. Most people put it in their dominant hand. Okay. You're going to hold the TIG torch about 90 degrees to the part with about a 10 to 15 degree push angle. Okay. You're going to slide your hand across the welding table. Holding that distance between the tungsten and the workpiece at a constant height. You know, typically anywhere from a quarter inch to three eighths of an inch is fine. We'll work on puddle control in part two. Okay. Hold it like a pencil. Okay. If you hold it like this in your hand, you're going to find out that you're holding the torch in midair, and it's really hard to keep it steady. This way, you can use the base of your hand as a guide or a standoff. It's much easier to keep that distance. Okay. You can see that my torch hand is smooth and steady. And your filler metal hand is going to be in a dabbing motion. You're just dabbing the filler metal right in front of the tungsten. Keep doing this exercise until you're comfortable with this action. This will help shortcut your learning experience and reduce the amount of scrap you're going to make. You know, usually what I find beginners doing is when they actually start the welding arc, their hands work together. And when they go to add the filler metal, their torch hand does the same action and you stick everything together. So that's one of the reasons I want to work on retraining your hands. Okay. Which brings me to Andy's fact number one. Okay. You can't weld what you can't see. Okay. You notice that I was looking at the torch off to the side. If you're sitting right behind it, you have a hard time seeing the weld puddle. Okay? And usually what beginners do is they'll start leaning the torch back and that puts a much more severe angle and eventually you'll start melting the filler metal first before the base metal and that's bad. Okay? So get to the side to the point where you can actually see the weld puddle, the tungsten and everything. The other thing is get a good quality welding helmet. This is the Digitally Elite with clear light technology. The clear light allows a lot more of the light spectrum through, which gives you a much clearer, better defined view of the weld puddle. Cheaper welding helmets have more of a darker green tint to it or even a blue tint, and they don't let nearly as much of that color spectrum through, and the weld puddle is fuzzy and it's not nearly as defined. So invest in a good quality welding helmet. Also, if you wear reading glasses, you might want to invest in a cheater lens to put in your welding helmet to help see the weld puddle too. In part two, we'll work on starting and managing the weld puddle.